Welcome back, everyone. Glad you could join me here today. Excited to get into the show where we are going to talk about some brand new research that actually shares with us the absolute best way to start a diet and to make it far more effective. Now, the reason why this caught my attention in the first place is because you know I'm a big proponent of a long-term diet as the Mediterranean diet, and it can be any subset of that. I've talked about the Nordic diet before. I've talked about uh, the Mediterranean diet with no grains. I've talked about it in many different ways. But we know through the research that there's pretty much no other diet that has more research on it that cuts down all of the top causes of mortality. So when I saw this research and I saw that they actually used a Mediterranean-style diet, but they actually were able to improve it. I know I had to share that research with you. So instead of me, you know, giving my own take on it, I actually want to share with you exactly what the research says. And then I'm going to try to make it as more real world as possible because, again, you're not in a lab, right? So you're not a lab research subject. We have to do this in the real world. But I really do believe that anyone is able to do this uh, in going into the new year or whenever you may be listening to this. So super excited about it. Again, it really combines a lot of what I believe in and that I've seen work in clinical practice. So the title of it is actually fasting can be an effective way to start a diet. And one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this to you today too is just because it's that time of the year that more people are starting diets more than ever. The problem is they're starting the wrong diets, okay? They're starting uh, quick fix diets. They're starting fad diets. They have no long-term, no, it's not them. Again, it's the diet plan. The diet plan has no long-term vision for metabolism, for boosting metabolism. And so all it's gonna be It's kind of like getting on a treadmill to lose weight. Well, in a month from now, you either have to run longer or run faster. The next month, run longer or run faster. The same thing with these fad diets. Fad diets is what? You already dropped your carbs down all the way. So what do you do? Well, now you have to go lower calorie, right? Or you need to exercise more. That is not a good long-term plan. We have to understand this. So what I love to do is to be able to combine uh, in, in equilibrium-based diet. So that means a diet that gets you back to homeostasis so that your body can naturally burn body fat as needed, that it can burn glucose as needed, and your body can function how it was meant to function. That is always the goal. Boost metabolism, that includes hormones, that includes uh, insulin levels, balancing insulin and glucose uh, receptivity, that includes inflammation, You have to understand is that a diet is not meant to be a deprivation-based plan. And unfortunately, that is more of what we will see in this coming year. So I just want to share with you good research, uh, that that has been that's out there. Okay, so this one is in the Journal of Nature Communications, and it's called the the full uh, actual research is called Fasting Alters the Gut Microbiome, Reducing Blood Pressure and Body Weight in Metabolic Syndrome Patients. It's a, it's a mouthful. I'm going to get back to that in just a second, why I chose this for everyone. And uh, okay, so here we go. So I'm going to read it to you. Really simple, really straightforward. This was done at Max Delbrick Center for Molecular Medicine in Helmholtz, Association in the Helmholtz Association. Apologize, I don't know exactly where that is, but it will share, share with us. Here it is, right here. So this was done in Germany, and and this is not just again. This is for people in all over the Western world. One out of four Germans suffers from metabolic syndrome. I understand metabolic syndrome is really a conglomeration of symptoms and diagnosed diseases, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, high triglycerides. It's all of the leading causes of mortality. And many of those people also end up with cancer as well. So you get all of the leading causes of mortality, which we know, uh, again, I always say cancer is the wild card because you can be exposed to something and not even know it, right? Heavy metals. That's why we say test for heavy metals, pesticides. So here's the thing, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, Type 2 diabetes, for the most part, meaning like 99 plus percent of cases, are non-genetic hypercholesterolemia, meaning that you can have cholesterol, and if it's in the 200s or low 300s, trust me, you're able to rebalance that. If it's 500, 600, okay, there may be a genetic component to that. It can still be worked on. But again, that's for very, very small cases. If you didn't grow up in your teenage years with high cholesterol, you probably are able to rebalance that no problem. All right, I just wanted to put that in there. But 
they're they're labeling this, and I'm going to do a future show on this, as the deadly quartet. Obesity, high blood pressure, lipid metabolism, by the way, that means cholesterol, and diabetes. Okay, so this is severe risk factors for death. I just stated that, but here it is right here. So a research group uh, done in Germany examined the effect of the change that diet has on people with metabolic syndrome. The ECRC is jointly run by the MDC, and they talked about switching to a healthy diet has a positive effect on blood pressure. Again, blood pressure was just one of the parameters they used for a person getting healthier. Again, we'll talk about this for a diet in just a moment. If the diet is preceded by a fast, this effect is intensified, okay? So what we're going to talk about here today is that they put people on a healthy diet, but... They started it with a five-day fast. Let's get into this. Both groups followed the DASH diet, dietary approach to stop hypertension diet for three months. Okay, so they put them on it for 12 weeks. Let's just stop for one moment so I can get you my episode on the DASH diet. Do I believe the DASH diet is the best diet in the entire world? No, I do not. However, I always give you the unbiased truth on all of this. Not everybody likes it, and I understand that, but this is not a popularity contest. This is about helping people get the unbiased truth and get help that they need. So I did a podcast on episode 2111. We'll link it up here today. But you can also find it at stephencabral.com forward slash 2111. Today's show with all of the research and the podcast, previous podcast will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2168. So head on over there for the details now. Because the DASH diet, although not the best diet out there, is clinically researched to help people lower blood pressure. So if you have family members that are just trying to take that first step, they may want to switch to something like the DASH diet, and then they can improve even better. Because again, clinically proven, DASH diet works to help lower blood pressure, right? Just from diet alone, not even talking about exercise, not talking about functional medicine, detoxification, not talking about sleep, not talking about any of these things, and the DASH diet helps, okay? So again, being, being unbiased, it does work. Is it the best? No, it can be improved, and I talked about how it can be improved. But Share this with people that have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, okay? This is a Mediterranean-style diet that includes lots of fruits and vegetables. Whole meal products, by that they mean grains, nuts and pulses, which are basically beans, fish, and lean white meat. So that's the DASH diet. One of the two groups uh, did not consume any solid food at all for five days before starting the DASH diet, okay? So liquid only for five days before the DASH diet, and then they hopped on the DASH diet. It's the only thing they did different, and check out the results. On the basis of immunophenotyping, the scientists observed how the immune cells of the volunteers changed when they altered their diet. The innate immune system remained stable during the fast, whereas the adaptive immune system shuts down, explains Mayfield. During this process, the number of pro-inflammatory T cells drops while regulatory T cells multiplies. Let me unpack that just for a second. So during a fast, not the same as the DASH diet, which is not fasting, but during a fast, which we talk about here all the time on the show, what happens is you get to keep your innate immune system. That means you're still able to fight off the outside invaders, right? Pathogens, bacteria, viruses, etc. But what happens is the adaptive immune system shuts down. That means your body self attacking itself right through molecular mimicry for autoimmune issues creating inflammation etc begins to get shut down during this process it says the number of pro inflammatory t cells drops just mean think about this the number of immune cells that create inflammation drop while regulatory T cells multiply. Regulatory T cells is the ability to actually kill things that shouldn't be in the body that's very basic but again i think that's a pretty good picture all right let's keep going to find out why. A Mediterranean diet is good, but to also fast is better. Uh, these, are, these are also funny because the first headline was broccoli over roast beef. Um, anyway, so let, let's go a little bit deeper into this. The researchers used stool samples to examine the effects of the fast on the gut microbiome. Gut bacteria work in close contact with the immune system. Some strains of bacteria metabolize dietary fiber into anti-inflammatory short-chain fatty acids that benefit the immune system. The composition of the gut bacteria ecosystem changes drastically during fasting. Health-promoting health promoting bacteria that help to reduce blood pressure multiply. 
Some of these changes remain even after resumption of food intake. The following is particularly noteworthy. Body mass index, BMI, blood pressure, and the need for antihypertensive medication remained lower in the long term among volunteers who started the healthy diet with a five-day fast, explains Dominic Mueller. Blood pressure normally shoots back up again when even one antihypertensive tablet is forgotten. This is absolutely remarkable in my opinion, and it shows that fasting has a place in almost every type of health protocol. It's so overlooked by conventional medicine. I'm hoping that these conventional medicine research studies that maybe some doctors begin to read them. And so here's why, and here's why I, I say this, because we're realizing that the gut microbiome, which we always say is the first place to look. If you can only look at two things, what do you do? You look at the gut and you look at stress, right? That's, that's what you look at. So if we look at the gut, and again, you can run your own stool test at home, okay? So you can literally, I believe it's stephencabral.com forward slash stool dash test, but you can definitely find it at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. It's a bacteria and parasite stool test because what they found, I'll save you from reading the rest of the, um, I'll save you from reading the rest of it and, and I'll link it up today at stephencabral.com forward slash 2168. So what they found was that the gut microbiome actually plays a huge role in inflammation in the body. And that leads to and can lead to autoimmune issues, but more specifically in this case, high cholesterol, blood pressure, type 2 diabetes. I'm almost willing to guarantee you that your conventional medicine doctor has never told you or your parents or grandparents that your gut bacteria has anything to do with your high blood pressure, your cholesterol, or your type 2 diabetes. I'm almost willing to guarantee that, right? So... Here's the thing. It does. Because what happens is we saw changes in the gut bacteria with the five-day fast. The five-day fast allowed for a removal of much of the uh, pathogenic bacteria, and it enabled people to keep their results even when the fast stopped. That's pretty remarkable. I mean, it really is. Now, here's the thing. We know that the gut is tied to all of the different processes of the body because it's what you, where you absorb right? Your nutrients. With leaky gut, you literally spill proteins and bacteria into the blood, which then can affect inflammation in the body and cause autoimmune issues. We know that 90% of all autoimmune is linked to the gut. We also know that it regulates inflammation in the body as well. The funny thing is, and again, it's not funny to our community, but it's, it's very frustrating for our community to know this. And we've been talking about this in the podcast for six years, that the absolute best way to start a diet or a wellness program is with a 21-day functional medicine detox. You get two days of liquid fasting each week. That's six days. Two each week makes it a whole lot easier. It's four shakes per day, right? This is well before the study ever came out. Why? Because it's not the only study. In functional medicine, in naturopathy, we've known this for decades. The traditional naturopaths called natural hygienists over a hundred years ago, used to fast people for about a week, right? Now, one of the reasons we do functional medicine detoxes is simply because there is so many toxins in the world today and your liver is so already overwhelmed that you don't need to be dealing with all the Herxheimer reactions, like the brain fog, the skin rashes, the massive headaches, the whatever it is that you can get benefit from, from actually getting a lot of these nutrients in your body. But again, I'm not saying you need to do a functional medicine detox. That not, that's not what today's show is. Just understand that this is not new to the natural health community. And it's also that I want to impress upon you that please don't wait for more and more research to come out to already show what Ayurvedic medicine has taught us 6,000 years ago. If you are not already including some type of quarterly longer fast into your overall health and wellness lifestyle plan. I can't recommend it enough. Every 12 weeks, just a seven day detox. That's it. Two days of liquid fasting. Then you move into your, um, your, your detox shake in the morning, your vegan lunch at, uh, at lunch, your shake in the afternoon, and then a paleo style dinner. That's it. You can have salmon, you can have chicken, you can have whatever you'd like. I mean, it's basically like the dash diet at night. That's what it is, but no grains. So again, it's not that it's not that it's actually much more complicated than that. It's easy to implement, but we've looked at everything from histamines to lectins to food sensitivities. It's all in there. And, uh, and it does a remarkable 
number for your health. That's it. But if you do a 21 day functional medicine detox, even if you want to do a straight five day fast, I just don't recommend it for first time people. That's it. Again, if you're in a medical supervised environment and you want to do a five day water fast, be medically supervised, especially if you have blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, et cetera. Uh, but yeah, it's going to work wonders. There's no doubt about it. I just don't think it's real world for most people. So what I'm saying is the science is true. The science is right. The DASH diet does work for high blood pressure. It can be improved to even a greater level. All of this information is out there. And for me, I want you to have your best year yet. And anybody suffering from high blood pressure is most likely taking five or 10 years off their life. If you, are, if you have very high cholesterol five, and you're medicated, five, 10 years off your life. Why? Because the statin drug is not going to save you. The statin drug actually causes cardi cardiomyopathy. You can look it up. It actually causes your heart to become weaker. Okay. If you have type two diabetes, you're at risk for so many other factors such as, um, uh, ocular eye based issues, right? Uh, you, meaning losing your vision. You can have circulatory issues. You're going to most likely have high blood pressure. You, all of these causes of mortality, uh, again, are going to decrease your life by five to 10 years. Your rates for cancer go up because there's so much inflammation in your body. So what I'm saying though, is it does not have to be that way. I want you to understand that fasting should be a part of everyone's daily routine. I have many podcasts on that. I'll link it up today at 2168. But every day is not a full fast. It's 12 hours, right? From six at night to six in the morning, seven at night to seven in the morning. Maybe you go longer than 12 hours. Maybe it's 14 hours. Maybe it's 16 hours. Don't overdo it on a daily basis, okay? Then once a week, you can do a little bit longer. And I explained that on a podcast. I don't want to go over it today. Uh, just because it, it won't have enough nuance to it. And then each quarter, you'll do a little bit longer. That is how you're going to get the benefits. That's how you're going to maintain the benefits. And you're going to get healthier each and every year. And that's really what it's all about. So I'm going to keep it at that because honestly, it's all that needs to be said. The information is out there. You can get better. Do not listen to conventional medicine if they give you a death sentence, which is basically a diagnosed disease. Keep looking for answers. Work with an integrative health practitioner. Run your at-home labs if you want. They're all open source now. You can order any lab that you want at stephencabral.com forward slash labs or work with an integrative, integrative health practitioner level two or work with your local naturopathic doctor. Just make sure that this is the year that you take back control of your health. Don't give your power to anybody else. This is your body, right? It's about your health. It's about your longevity, your quality of life. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, I'll link everything up today at stephencabral.com forward slash 2168. Have an amazing day. And of course, if this podcast was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. <laughs>